things. I've been wanting to say that for a long time. <laughs> I had to say it. But yes, she started her career in this acting you know, industry that we're in at a very young age. I think 2007 or maybe even earlier. Three. 2003, wow. So she, you were in theatre before. You were doing <laughs> yes, theatre before. Yes. Since I was 17, uh, actually. Since you were 17, then yep. you moved on to do, you know, series yeah. and, and films. Exactly. And then now you're directing. Here we are. That's, and producing. That's amazing. <laughs> I know. How does it feel? It's been like a whole, you know, full circle yeah. moment for you because yeah. you started off literally um, as, as, as uh, an actress mm. on in theater yeah. and then now you have gone back to directing other actresses in theater so how does that feel well ideally i wouldn't say that i, I went back mm -hmm. i've always been in the theater mm -hmm. okay. perhaps the only difference is that now i am juggling both tv and theater right right and i like that it's uh, like you say it's a full circle thing mm -hmm. because then when i come back to produce or i come back to direct then i'm not coming to tell people to do something that i don't know how to do or i don't of have course. you've been doing, doing it for a while know? yeah so it's good i like that it's full circle because I'm a fuller artist that mm. way, yeah. And tell us about Graveyard Queens. You know, there's so much that we've been hearing about it. Um, the fact that it was directed by two women, phenomenal actresses, and of course, talented people like you and your cubby. So it must be, and you two, the two of you together, I feel like you've got a very interesting <laughs> chemistry on screen, yep. off screen, your Instagram, <laughs> social media is always buzzing with, you know, like little bit behind the scenes yeah. moments of you two together, yeah. which is nice to see your friendship. Absolutely. And then the fact that you can actually um, translate that into work, which mm -hmm. is amazing. Yeah. So how did that happen to be? So this is the thing. Uh, most times when Yokafi and I have this conversation and we we talk, listen, we are our number one fans. <laughs> I love and, that. You know, we like to celebrate our small wins and sometimes we'll go like, you know, I'm so lucky to have you as a partner. And we realized over time it's because we started as business partners and then we became friends as, mm. a, as, as opposed to the other way around. right? Okay. However, um, I always knew of her. Um, I even replaced her on a show. She she did a play called Jesus Christ Superstar, and she played Mary Magdalene. And I watched her, and I thought, Oh Lord, this girl is phenomenal. Yeah. Right. And then something happened. I didn't see her again. And then they did a, the same show. Then I ended up doing that role. And so f we we sort of admired each other from far. She was in the UK, but by then I was still in Kenya. Right. And so through a friend of ours called Charlie Ouda, who's also an actor, he while he was in New York, he connected us with this lady, and we did an online event. And that's how Nyokafi and I started working together. And so during, you know how during COVID guys would do things. Yeah, and just lots of collaboration exactly. happening. Exactly. And then you do like an online rap party. Right. So during that rap party is how, I suppose Nyokafi and I spoke some more and so that, and noticed that we had the same dreams with yeah. the theater and film yeah. industry. Yeah, and then we just took it from there. Yeah, and how was the feedback for your first play, uh, well, as directors? <laughs> To be honest, it gets it keeps getting better. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Because ideally, we started online again. Like mm -hmm. I said, our shows are on Instagram Live, and so doing our first uh, in a live show, which is which was how to have an affair, it was a little tricky because you don't know if the people who show up on Instagram or online are going to translate. And yeah, of course, actually, if they'll actually and pay for it. Precisely, if it's going to translate monetarily, and it did. It was great. Um, um, it was a great experiment. Mm -hmm. We had a really good house. It was great working with Charlie and your cafe. But then great weird queens just blew it out. Like it just went crazy. Yeah, it was yeah. we didn't anticipate the sort of success it would be. We knew it would be successful because yeah. of course we had an amazing cast, but then we didn't expect to have such a great reception from everyone around yeah it's amazing congratulations Thank and you. we hear there's a lot happening um of course there's so much in the pipeline mm. for you and your copy together yes. and what exactly can we expect from the two of you together okay so for the next quarter until the year is over on the yo you know today i was looking at lisa like i need to pull out a scroll we have a whole schedule <laughs> i love it so <laughs> give me a second let me get on it <laughs> so at the end of september we have a directing masterclass. okay right? we are running with uh, with carol odongo carol coach odongo oh, yes. she's one of our cast yes. members she's a great director she's on salem she's directed my film and then at the on the 20th of october so end of September we have a directing masterclass and end of October we have a producing masterclass. But then the last show of the year by Shows from Africa is November 25th and 26th. 
Wow, yeah. so there's a lot happening. Well, just those three things, but okay. yeah, it's a lot, I know. <laughs> we girl boss too hard. But you know, like when, when, when we speak about actors in general, you know, sometimes you have busy seasons, and then at times you literally have seasons where you're not doing much at all. Mm -hmm. You're literally just waiting for the next project. Yeah. What about you? Which season are you in, apart from Shorts from Africa? What mm -hmm. else are you doing as Nice Givingi? You mentioned that, you know, there's something here and there that yeah. you're working on. Yeah. So first of all, before we finish with Shots from Africa, um, we're doing the 48-hour film challenge yeah. this year, yeah. which is 48 hours of writing, directing, shooting, and uploading a film. Oh, that's nice. I know, it's exciting. I've actually like seen a lot about this challenge yeah. on social media, mm. especially when there's awards, right? Yes, it's global, actually. Yeah. yeah, so some people actually submit their work to, to, to I guess, to some body, that mm -hmm. then then you they get an award or something. Yeah. I've seen some. The winning films go to Cannes in France. Yes, exactly, and, the, and yeah. the Kenyan has actually won yes, in the past, Kibana right? pictures they won with it's still the f best film yet to see from 48 it's called bait right so yes. I, I saw that yeah. as well and I was like this is incredible it's crazy. phenomenal it's 48 hours stuff. of work yes and then so it's on all Friday done. night you go and like we pull straws that's how you get your theme so Friday night that's when you start writing and then between Friday and Sunday night you have to write cast direct edit shoot edit and then upload. Wow. and by Sunday needs to be good so you're going to be doing this as Shots from Africa? Yes, as Shots from Africa, and we are collaborating with a company called Shot Nerds. Amazing. Yeah, this is yeah. exciting. Yeah. You know, I feel like an actor's world is just so interesting. It there is. There's so many layers to it, <laughs> and there's so many things that you're constantly doing. You're constantly evolving and, you know, trying out different things. Um, you also have to always kind of make sure that you're evolving with the times, mm. right? Because yeah, back sure. in the day, social media wasn't that big. Mm. Um, as uh, It didn't have that much of a role to play in your lives and your success. But mm. now, Absolutely. I feel like there's actors who, as you said, you're actually performing on Instagram. I know, yeah. Which is it's phenomenal. Yeah, boundaries so, don't exist anymore with uh, right? social media, which so, is a great thing. So how, yeah. how did you adapt to these evolving and ever-changing times that we're in, in the digital age? <sighs> to be honest, I don't have anything profound to say. I just had to get with it. You yeah. either get with the program or you get left behind. And right. So I had to do it because it was important. It was imperative for my career. Mm. So I didn't really have much of a choice. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't have much of a choice. <laughs> I, I like that. Yeah. Just like everybody else, I'm <laughs> like, yeah. if I don't do if this... this is what I got to do to make my money, okay, I Let's will go. do it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Love that. Um, yeah. And Ice, how exactly did you get into acting? Because you said that you've been doing this since 2003 when you were just 17 years mm, old. Yeah. So did you just like stumble upon acting or was it a passion of yours <sighs> that you kind of grew into <laughs> later on? Well, ideally I was going to finish high school and go to Uganda, do from five and six, and then go to Makere and study law. That was the dream. Wow. Isn't it? Yeah. Then life happened, but lucky enough I had been in drama all through school, ever since primary school to be honest. But then there's a guy who's still in crew right now. He's called Anthony Ruchabingwa. He works for a show called Kina, if I'm not wrong. So Ruchabingwa was in my high school, and then he cleared. They come back and perform. Lucky I had a penchant for mm -hmm. the arts. And so I spoke to him. I asked him, how did you get to do this? And then he gave me a number. So by the time I was finishing my last paper, I knew that things weren't really going to go as they were meant to. So I made a call to David Kenya from Planets, and he told me, come, December. We have auditions at the theatre, so December I was at the theatre. The next year, January, I was already doing travelling theatre. That's so insane. So it was just that you just literally ended up getting a role like that. Yes, I did. Do you know most people I've spoken to on this seat of mine have yeah. mentioned how auditions are gruesome. You but have to are. go for constant auditions and you know most of the times you don't end up getting the part there's rejection that you face and then of course you have to just get a really thick skin to mm -hmm. be able to survive and, and and kind of thrive in this industry yeah. um so for you did you ever have a point where you've constantly gone for auditions and it's been tough listen <laughs> come on I st it still happens to yeah. me even now. You, you don't get parts. Yeah, I still go for auditions and I, st I don't get parts. It's part of the job. You right. know? So you can't take it too personally. And what I like to tell my students is when you miss a job, it's not because you weren't good enough. Mm. You just didn't fit it. Okay. It's not a personal thing, you know, maybe it's a height thing, maybe it's yeah. an attitude thing. Of course, because most it, of the times there's like a very specific look that they're looking precisely, for. Precisely, yeah. And so it's, if you look at, if you take it personally, then it's very easy for the industry to break you down. However, so long as you know you're walking there, there do your best. And to be honest, sometimes doing an audition is as good as keeping your information in their data. Right. You never know when they're going to come back to your tape and call mm -hmm. you for a job, you know. 
So a rejection is never really completely a rejection unless you went and just did a bad job at the audition. <laughs> that that or that. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, you mentioned that you actually have an acting school as well. This is true. Where you have students and you know you just mentioned your students. So tell me more about yeah. that. That's very exciting. Yeah, so I started um, because I'm not formally trained. I, I have learned from workshops and master classes as well. That's why I'm doing the same thing. Okay. Um, and YouTube, you know, and the free workshops you find online. So I felt for the longest time, like you mentioned, you work, but then you have these long periods of time where you don't have work. Mm -hmm. So I needed to remind myself of what I'm learning by doing it. And so I figured if I'm not going to do it on the job, then I might as well teach it. Right. right. And so I started teaching it around in 2017 with a group called Genice We Save. Didn't really work out, but then I'm glad Charlie came back to the country, sort of gave me hope and also a very special friend who told me, you know what, we just try doing this thing again. Mm. And so we started the talent studio. We have now 20 students. Um, we on the second semester, it's a full year's program. Okay. Just a thousand bob a week for 52 weeks. Um, we are doing our first showcase at the end of semester for the theater rehearsal, mm -hmm. uh, the theater course, and then we start doing film in the next semester. Um, we are also onboarding music oh, and uh, nice. yeah, vocal lessons and music writing and script writing come October, October 2nd. That's amazing. Yeah. So, do you know, what are some of the questions I feel that most of these budding actors have for you? Like, what are some of the struggles and the areas that you feel that we as the Kenyan industry really need to work on? Days are gone when we had struggles. Yeah. Now we don't have struggles. We just don't know... We are not, we don't have the method to the madness. Okay. Okay. You don't know how to get yourself in front of casting directors. Mm. You don't know where to find a monologue. You don't know who to talk to if you want to become an actor. So it's less a struggle and more. Unfortunately, we, we, we come from a society, sometimes as Kenyans, where we think for you to do anything, you have to have a connection. Yeah, you need to know someone who you knows need to someone. Know someone. Yeah. So my biggest ick, to be honest, is people telling me, just go with me. They'll take me more seriously if they see me with you. Or yeah. could you call them and, and refer me? So but tell then them I about haven't me. seen tell you them work. Me. And then you see, our work is very practical. You yes. have to be able to do yes. it. So it doesn't matter who I could tell, okay, Shiksha, go give this person a job. Yeah. But if they can't do it, you will see they can no, do it. Yeah. for sure. So I think we, we, we spend a bit too much time thinking about the connections. Yes. And waste time not doing the self-work. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Now, self-work. Self-work. Tell me more about self-work as an actor. What are a few things that maybe, you know, you can, at the top of your mind that you can think of that an actor needs to do before going for an audition? Mm. Or in general, like when you're prepping for a role, some things that an actor can do to improve their art. I will make it simple. So early, earlier on this year, Shots from Africa had uh, two workshops. One was for IP, knowing our IP, and the other one was how to manage our money because of how unstable uh, an artist's money is. And this, uh, the CEO of Sentono, Miwaiza Kagatumia, came and said there's something very interesting. He said, our job is the acting. Right. You are your office. Right. So when you're not working, what are you doing with your office? Are you learning a monologue? Mm. Are you in front of the mirror trying to study something? Are you talking to your friends and trying to do scene work together? That is the self-work. Recently, yesterday, actually, Nyokafi sent me another video by Eugene Bogwa. You know Eugene, yes, Eugene yes. right? Uh, amazing CEO within the, within the arts, where he was saying that we take too much time being busy, running to this interview, running to this job, and we don't sit back and be, I get idle enough for you to start thinking about your life. Okay. You understand? Okay. And that is the self-work. The self-work is sitting down and asking yourself, okay, I woke up at 8 a.m., Fine, I'll watch a series until 10, and then what? Have I learned a monologue? Right now, if I'm called by Charles Oda and say, he says, come, show up with a monologue, do I have something in my bank? You understand? Mm. So, for instance, that's the thing that I keep teaching my kids. I think by now, the ones who are on the second semester have six monologues or four monologues ready to go because you constantly have to be equipped. You never know when the call is going to come, and you can't start working once you get the job. Yeah. You understand? Yeah. yeah. That's amazing. Actually, you're right, because... 
Okay, as somebody who's not an actor, right, there's been times when I've actually showed up for auditions and I don't know which monologue to do because I don't have any yeah. at the back of my mind. Yes. I have to go online, I have to search, which mm -hmm. takes hours. Mm -hmm. And then by the time you get it, you the, still have to learn you still it. Have to learn it. And then you barely have like a few hours yeah. to practice or a night even to practice. Because exactly. most of these auditions are, are, pretty, are called pretty late or mm -hmm. you stumble upon them mm -hmm. pretty late when you just have two to three days. That's yes. a brilliant tip. Yeah, yeah. This is why you have a school. <laughs> this is why I'm teaching you. <laughs> this is why you're teaching. Amazing. Yeah. Um, nice. Tell me more about, you know, the fact that you said you've always had a passion for drama. You started off, you know, being in drama school, in high school. And then, of course, you ended up doing theatre and then film and then series. I mean, it's, it's just been literally a lot that you've been doing off late. What is your most favourite thing of all these things that you do? Um, is, is it teaching? Is it directing? Is it acting? What is it? I've heard you're also a singer. I do, yeah, I am. What can't you do firstly? Tell me that. <laughs> what can I not do? That's an easier question to ask. Mm -hmm. I can't write. I wish I could. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Oh, well, wait. Was I supposed to be modest at that point? I go like, oh my God, I can't do so many things. No, no, no. Oh, it's okay. <laughs> anyway, what? when I think about it, I can't pick a favorite. Kitambo, I would say I prefer acting. Okay. Okay. I still love acting. Yeah. I love the attention. I love playing. I love just being anything else but me but then when i started directing there's something amazing there's something about you drawing a picture and then seeing it come to life mm. and then watching the reaction it's just very rewarding right it's no for, rewarding is small okay <laughs> god like yeah it's like it feels like you've created it's like my such. baby it's like look yeah. at my child yeah. yes so i really can't pick I like producing as well because I like to put teams together. I, I really cannot pick. However, I'll say that I'm lucky and I'm not um, blind to the fact that I'm lucky enough that uh, to, to be able to make money from everything that I love to do. You know, I like to sing, I like to act, I like to produce. Yeah. There's none of these things that I'm doing because I have to. Yeah. Yeah. You enjoy all, doing I all love these doing things. All of them. Yeah. That's something that I resonate with as well because you know sometimes when you know you don't, work doesn't feel like work, mm. that's when you know that you're truly living. Right? right. So, so, so good to know. I feel yes. like a lot of us creatives, we're in this space where we're very happy because you're doing what you enjoy. Mm. And then when you get money out of it, that's like the, the that's little even icing on the cake, exactly. the little cherry on the top of the yeah, cake. Yeah. Um, you know, let's talk about the fact that these days, I feel everybody starts off, I mean, you just, even you started off at 17 years old, right? But I feel like nowadays, getting big and get going viral and, and, and kind of blowing up as an actor or actress, it starts off at a very young age, you know, the likes of Boogie, look at Boogie, we have um, Shiko, you know, these are people who I've seen and they're like 22, 21, 23 and they're huge stars. We saw Boogie before his, uh, his voice broke. Literally. And how he's, he's just <laughs> roaring all over us, like, I, come on I, child. I'm telling you, so <laughs> what do you think is the difference yeah. with this generation, mm -hmm. as they call themselves the Gen Z, Gen Z. and the millennials, yeah. and how things were for you when you were debuting and when, of course, mm. when you were making your big, um, you know, you were taking your step in the industry, compared to now how these guys have actually managed to do the same like mm. what do you think has been different within these two eras <sighs> okay my opinion mm -hmm. we grew up in very different times yes actually, very different times my i'm 38 right mm -hmm. what yes what <laughs> so my mom that's crazy 38 i'll give you a second <laughs> what <laughs> yes i'm 38 this month that's amazing i mean you do not look i think that's why i say it so confidently though yeah <laughs> I, I would i would assume maybe 32 33 yeah at well. most do you get that a lot yes i do yeah. okay so anyway my mom grew up I, i'd like to see my mom grew up at, at an age where when she was a teenager there was it was time for where the coup was happening you know those it's fresh off of mau mau and stuff yes so their parents really didn't understand how to love because of the state of the nation of what was happening around them isn't it okay and then we came up so these kids like in a boogie they're our they're our kids and we have grown up in an age where we understand that there's mental illness we understand that um a blue collar job is not the only way to success of course we understand that a kid, that a kid could be great at chess and they never step into class and they become successful yes you know? so i think that's the different difference i think parents are a bit more aware and more open and more 
willing to let their kids try things. And also support them. Support them. Mm -hmm. In my class, uh, our class with Charlie, I'll tell you, I have kids who are in KCA University okay. studying film and are still coming to my acting class. Wow. Some kids who graduated from UN doing film right. and are still coming to my class, isn't it? And that's because your par parents right now, don't, they don't feel like they're wasting money. They're they're like, it's cool. Let's see where this goes, you know. Yeah. And that's the only difference. They're like, you don't need to have a yeah. degree. Yeah. You know? It's not that you don't need to, yeah. but you can do both. You can yeah. get a degree yeah. and still be a DJ. Yeah. You know, you can do both at the same time. You won't be told, ah, I can't name any So you have to get a degree yeah. and you have to get a job, yeah. a 95 job, yeah. a white collar job. <laughs> exactly. So they, they have better support systems, I believe. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That's, that's actually an interesting way to put it because yeah. um, I was actually going to ask you the same question. When you were getting into this industry, did you ever have problems, you know, from your family? Were they ever like, no, you, you can't know. do this? How, how, how did they react when you oh, told them? My mom was the coolest, first of all. What did she first say when you told her, okay, I want to be an actress? This is the thing with my mom. I don't think we ever had any conversation. I would do things and she'd say, this is good or this is not good. And then I would find out whether it's good or not. You know? Wow. Yeah, she wasn't, my mom was interesting. I, I say I was never beaten as a kid. Because, and it's the guilt of how hurt mom would be that would make you not do anything wrong, right? Mm. Yeah. What I don't like is, so you, you remember Coca-Cola pop stars? Yes. Yeah. They were our neighbors way back then. And Kevo was such a good friend of mine. Okay. I remember my mom always asked, Hey mom, kwani you uta ikuja kwa TV? Yeah. Uta kwa TV aje kama akina Kevo. And then when she died, the next year I got on Changing Time, on Aww. Better Days. She missed it by a whisker. So she was very supportive. Even when I was doing theater, she was still supportive. Right. Yeah. She was great. Yeah. So, like, my family has always been supportive. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. That's nice to hear because, as you said, you know, if you've got the support and if you've got the backing of a family or friends or mm. just uh, a, a closed inner circle Absolutely. who actually root for you mm. and they believe in you, I feel like your chances of, of becoming of being successful are, are much higher yeah. because then at the end of the day you also have the emotional support, which is very important. Because the industry is hard enough. In today's I, time. Exactly. Yes. So you don't yes. need... Your, your society that put behind you right. to break you down. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So as we wrap up, you mm -hmm. know, I do know that you are a very passionate human being. I, I've got that from this <laughs> conversation that we've had and a lot of things that you do. So what would you like to tell budding actors, you know, people who are really struggling with breaking through? What would you say to them at this very moment with all these years of experience that you have? Talk to them. That's your camera. <laughs> Gosh, just do it for the right reasons. Um, if you want fame, then that's easy to get. If you want money, I believe that's easy to get. But if you want longevity, then you have to put in the hours. You have to intentionally pick your work and you have to intentionally pick what goes out there about you. That's pretty much it. Yeah. And as we wrap up once again, thank you so much for coming. It's been a pleasure thank having you, you having here. Me. Looking forward to seeing all these cool things you're doing. There's a thank movie you. in the pipeline. There's yes. a series in the pipeline. Yes. There's a lot of directing that's going to be happening. So rooting for you. Uh, a, a, you know, big thumbs up to you and people like I think Yokabi as well for you know kind of getting this industry to the next level, mm. which I think is very important. Mm. I feel like our acting industry has really really transformed absolutely and there's so much potential there's so much growth that we've seen in the last three years yeah. from covid to now it's been incredible yeah and people like you have contributed to it so absolutely. well done yeah and uh and the new the kids are really good i feel like covid they put are. Us in, there was an incubator during covid and now everything is just coming out everything is booming it's and it's just yes. beautiful to see yeah so thank you so much for coming thank once you. again it's been an absolute pleasure and all the best in your future asante sana right. <laughs> and that was it for today interview with Nice Giving G. Please do go follow her on Instagram, support her work and of course Shorts Form Africa, that's her new venture with Nyokabi Masharia um, as they'll be, you know, doing lots of interesting things, two powerful women together and trying to kind of take this acting industry to the next level which I think is beautiful. So make sure you support them and support our very Kenyan creators and actors and actresses and just generally just just support the craft that's it from me i'll be seeing you next week same time same place cold jack's taking over with the great tunes the vibes they're on until 12 30 so make sure you don't go too far good night thank you thank you Yeah. Hey.